Hello everybody. Uh, so we are going to uh, solve one more example on the degrees of freedom analysis. And uh, before we start this example, I want just to uh, go through the procedure that we can uh, just know based on what we did before. But I I prefer to have it as uh, as list of of uh, uh, consecutive steps so that you can uh, check that you are not missing anything. So first we have to start with the uh, flow sheet with all given information written on it whether we know them or we don't know them and all the values of all the known variables then uh, if there is no flow rate we have to assume a basis we have to make sure that this is important that all the units are um, are homogeneous so if we are dealing with moles then all of the information should be in moles if we have mass then all of the information should be in mass um, and of course if it's mass then uh, we have to uh, unify the units of the masses uh, and if it's mass, then we have to uh, express the concentrations as mass fractions. If they are moles, then we express concentrations as mole fractions. And then uh, it's important to list all the additional, additional relations just to make sure that we have everything in place, um, in one place, so we don't have to go back and forth between the text and the um, solution that we are going through. Then before we start the solution, we have to perform the degrees of freedom analysis. And I think now it's clear why why we have to do this uh, it's very important to make sure that you have all the needed information before you start the solution finally you list put the, the all the equations additional relations and then you solve them together to find all the unknown variables and then to uh, scale up if it's needed and we will keep this for later so we will apply this now on another example which we have here um, we have and this is this is a good example because we will have here <coughs> Um, some um, uh, kind of confusing uh, data and it's it's good that we will go through this so we have a mixture containing uh, or, or consists of 45 percent benzene and 55 percent toluene so it's clear that this is um, the the uh, this is by mass so this is the mass fraction of benzene uh, 40.45 the mass fraction uh, of toluene is 0.55 um, and th this mixture is fit to a distillation column and then we have the product leaving the top of the column which is the overhead uh, contains 95 mass percent benzene so this is the concentration of the benzene in the top product um, so till now the 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 information are very clear and straightforward and i don't think they are confusing by any means um, the next sentence is the is the one that will be a little uh, confusing it says that the bottom product stream contains 8% of the benzene fed to the column. So the first thing uh, that you have to keep in mind that uh, it's not because you have a, a, a percentage, uh, it's not necessarily, uh, or it doesn't necessarily mean that this percentage is concentration. Um, so we had here 45% and it's concentration, 55% concentration, 95% concentration, but this 8% is not necessarily a concentration. It can be something else as we will see. Uh, so to to make sure that it's concentration, it has to be mentioned that it's a concentration. So it's saying that the mixture contains 45% benzene and 55% toluene. This is concentration. It says the overhead contains 95 mass percent benzene. So it's concentration. It's say, saying it's mass percent. So it is. it has no other meaning other than concentration. But for this sentence, it says that uh, the, the bottom product stream contains 8% of the benzene fed to the column. So this is not the concentration of benzene in the bottom product it is giving us a relation between the amount of benzene in the bottom product relative to the amount of benzene in the feed stream which is uh, is an additional relation and it's even made more clear uh, using the sentence in between brackets it says that 92 percent of meaning that 92 which means that this sentence means that 98 percent of the um, uh, benzene um, in the uh, uh, in the uh, from the feed leaves with the overhead product and this this is almost the same piece of information uh, if we have 100 percent benzene in the feed then eight percent goes to the bottom product then 92 goes to the top product so it's it's the same thing so it's it's kind of trying to uh, elaborate more that this is not a concentration it is uh, it is ratio between the amount of benzene in the top in the bottom product and in the feed um, we are told that the volumetric flow rate of the feed stream is 2,000 liters per hour, and we know the specific gravity of the feed stream. 
Um, and from this, we can know that these two information can be used to uh, calculate the mass uh, flow rate. So this is kind of an indirect way of defining the mass flow rate. Finally, we are asked to define the determine the, the mass flow rate uh, of the overhead product stream and the mass flow rate of the compositions of the bottom product. So it's it's asking us to calculate all the unknown variables. So the first step that we mentioned is that we have to draw the flow sheet with all the details. So the flow sheet would be as uh, as we see here. We have a feed that is 2,000 liters per hour. It contains 45% benzene, 55% toluene. The same for the information that we know for the top product. The bottom product, I don't know anything about the concentrations, but I have um, X benzene. Yeah, let me zoom in more, make sure it's clear here. So yeah, it's clear now. So it's uh, we have benzene and we have toluene. Okay. So although I don't know how much benzene and toluene we have, but I have to list that we have benzene and toluene. So um, the the solution will be um, uh, first by, by doing the degrees of freedom, but we said before doing the degrees of freedom, we have to list the additional relations. And this is the additional relation that we have. We were told that 8% um, of the benzene in the feed goes to the bottom product, which means that the mass of benzene in stream three, which is the benzene here, is 0 .8, 0 0.08, which is 8% of the mass flow rate of benzene in stream one. Okay, um, and luckily, luckily, we know the mass flow rate of benzene in stream one. We know this number. It's 45% of M1, and we, we will calculate M1 later. But, but for now, this is the additional relation that we have. Um, I, I, I wouldn't like to start with any substitutions in the equations before we do the degrees of freedom analysis, just to make sure that we can proceed. So for the degrees of freedom analysis, we have number of variables minus number of given variables minus number of equations minus number of relations. So the number of variables that we have is one, two, three, four, five, six. And we said before, we just count the number of variables or the number of components in each stream and we add them. So we have six variables. The given variables that we have are, uh, we have two given variables here, the mass flow rate and one of the compositions. The second one is not considered uh, a given variable because it's a dependent variable. If we are not told that this is 0 0.55, we can find it ourselves. So we have one composition and a flow rate, so we are two. And here the same, one of them is known and the other is dependent. So we have one uh, more information, so we have three. And uh, we have no given information here, so we have uh, zero in stream three, so we have two and one, so we have three given information. Six variables, three information, and we have two uh, components uh, or two species in this in this um, um, uh, unit. So these two species will mean that we have two equations. And finally, for the additional relations, we have only one, which is the one that's listed below. <coughs> So if you put all the numbers together, it's 6 minus 3 minus 2 minus 1, um, which is 0, which means that the problem is solvable. So we can start the solution. Again, um, let's look at the degrees of freedom um, information that we have. These two uh, numbers represent the equations, number of equations that we have. And these two represent the unknowns. So we have three unknowns and we have three equations. So the number of unknowns uh, that we have or the unknowns that we have is M2. M3 and one of the compositions in uh, stream 3 um, and this is what we want to um, to calculate okay so now we can um, first uh, calculate M1 which is easy to calculate using the uh, specific gravity and reference density which gives us the density of the feed stream and we multiply it by the volumetric flow rate to give us the uh, the uh, mass flow rate so of course this is uh, I put it as one to be kilograms per liter um, uh, it's 1000 kilogram per meter cube, which is one kilogram per liter, uh, which is the density of water at four degrees Celsius, liquid water at four degrees Celsius. Um, and this will give us kilograms per hour, and this is going to be 1744 kilograms per hour. Now we have uh, the mass flow rate already calculated, so we can do the uh, or use the equations. We have the uh, balance equations, we can write three equations and use two of them, we will have the total balance, which is M1 equals M2 plus M3. We know M1, so we can uh, put it in terms of M2 and M3. Uh, we can write the balance equation on B, so we have B in stream one, which is XB1 times M1, 
equals xb2 m2 plus xb3 m3 so this gives us the second equation the third equation is going to be the same it's for toluene instead of benzene so we'll put the coefficients or the the mass fractions of toluene finally we have the um, the additional relation which is mb3 is 0.08 uh, times mb1 uh, which we can calculate here um, and this is what we have here I'm not sure if it's clear but if you uh, if you look here uh, maybe you need to zoom more so I think it's clear now so this is um, uh, x3 mb3 so it's it's the 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 uh, the multiplication of both this is the mass flow rate of benzene in stream 3 uh, it's not x it's not m3 it's the mass of benzene in stream 3 it's equal to 62.8 by just direct substitution in this in this equation so um, from uh, the the additional relation <coughs> um, we can uh, we can substitute you have 0.45 times the flow rate of stream 2 equals 0.95 so uh, so I, I use the additional relation with the balance of benzene so I solve these two equations together uh, I'm, I'm sorry this equation and this value so I used 62.8 instead of uh, xb3m3 so by this we can find m2 uh, which is uh, very straightforward uh, we calculate it to be 760 and from the total balance we can calculate m3 <coughs> and from any of these two equations we can calculate xb3 and uh, xt3 so now we calculated um, everything so yeah, I think this is this is a simple problem. Uh, it's just uh, again one more one more um, problem to practice this this uh, um, this uh, uh, degrees of freedom on single unit. Uh, and again, it's it's a good a good way of understanding how important the degrees of freedom is. So I'll stop here. Next time we will start with a uh, next topic, which is um, the uh, extension of this, which is the degrees of freedom on multi-unit system which means that we will have more than one unit in the same process so i'll see you then inshallah goodbye